And now to test things out, we should build a little rocket. Again, I haven't added any parts packs. We're just using the stock parts. So we are going to have the standard Mark 1-3 command pod. We should have a heat shield, which now would be a four meter heat shield because, oh, there's a node problem. Um, and that's because the parts are scaled up by a factor of 1.6, which means the 2.5 meter parts become four meter parts. The 1.25 meter parts become two meter parts. So keep that in mind. And uh, the exception is for space planes. The space plane parts are scaled up by 1.722. Okay, so we've got that. And we've got the stock shoots. So, hmm. Well, they might need to take a look at the configuration of this pod. Its nodes are in the wrong place. That's interesting. I bet they haven't looked at it recently. So real shoots, um, if you wanted to configure the shoot, you would click on it while in the action group menu. And then you can configure shoot. We're going to say it is a triple shoot. Nylon is fine. And we want a touchdown speed of six meters per second. And we're going to go with pressure pre-deployment 0.3 atmospheres. And then the full deployment is at 1000 meters and apply settings. And it says succeeded. It'll change the part mass. It'll automatically size the chute to what you need. We'll keep all the ablator on the heat shield just in case, because we don't know how much we need yet. And let's see, uh, they haven't reskilled the decouplers because they're probably expecting us to use um, procedural parts. And we'll have a service module thing. The tank should be resized as well. So we're looking for the 2.5 meter tanks. Oh no. <laughs> well, you might want tweak scale for this. Okay, so there's, there's still 2.5 meters. Hmm. No, that's gonna complicate matters. Well, we're going to go with a, the 3.75 meter tanks then. At least that is an option. I wonder if the Wolfhound has enough well, now the AJ-137, uh, AJ-10-137, that'll fit, but I don't know if it'll have enough Delta V. We need to make sure to fill the tank. Um, why don't we put a little bit of the thruster fuel here? Not that much. We could put that in separate tanks too. And then you can click on this to automatically configure it for this engine. You can see as I hover over it, AJ-10-137. Okay, now we have Delta V, uh, 2622. Not much thrust to weight ratio though. Maybe we don't need this heavy, uh, we're gonna do low, low uh, earth orbit operations. So maybe that tank is just too much. That's still quite a lot of, uh, Delta V. Well, I think I'm going to go with a different service module strategy. We don't need something this big. Maybe we'll just go with the 2.5 meter tank and put a fairing around everything. <laughs> uh, guys, I think this is probably too big. I, I understand what they went for. What? What? No, I don't actually. Uh, this this AJ-10-137 size correctly. This one is the wrong size. Somebody's going to need to look at the configurations of the stock parts. I just... I just realized that something is horribly wrong. That is too big for the Estes engine as well. Oh god. And the nodes on the capsule being wrong also suggests something is off here. Well, the best fit is still this thing. So I'll go with it. It's actually not that heavy. Let's just have the thrusters be Arizine and NTO instead of having different fuels. So we can go to engine show GUI and we need to go to Arizine and NTO plus 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 and then they're configured for that fuel as well. 
Though it's a little bit awkward with that shroud, so let's uh, disable that shroud. And we're going to tuck, we're just going to put this in there, like that. Alright. Uh, it doesn't let me build a fair. Oh, wait. I'm going to use an engine plate, I think. Okay. Hopefully that's correct. <laughs> All right. We almost have a decent looking rocket, perhaps. Now, I think I want a J2. This is a J2. That fits. That's what I expected. And But we still need to load up the tank. And hydrogen takes a lot of space, so this isn't too small a tank for hydrogen. Uh, we'll keep that tank there just so that I occupy that node. But uh, let's have a. Well, maybe we should just have the adapter higher up. So we occupy this node there, slip that in. Alright. And then we need the larger form factor tanks. And then the J2. Hmm? Oh no, these haven't been configured for realism overhaul. Oh joy. Maybe you should get part mods. <laughs> I've reconsidered. Well, we're just gonna stack a whole bunch of these together. We're gonna make it work somehow. And we're gonna put liquid hydrogen and oxygen in all of those. Hmm. Maybe we should just go kerosene, because this isn't gonna lift anything. We needed the larger tanks if we wanted hydrogen. 3.75 meters is not pretty, not very wide. Oh, that's why. It was sea level. The J2 was reading the sea level. Okay, hold on. That's why. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, with vacuum, things make sense. Now the J... I was wondering why the configuration wasn't working out. But uh, now with hydrogen and oxygen and all of those in vacuum, we would get... 5,256 meters per second and a thrust to weight ratio of 1.1. Uh, sea level, obviously not so good. Okay, so that's nominal. And maybe we'll have F1... Well, we only need one F1 booster, to be honest. Uh, but maybe SRBs, hey. They got all the new SRBs and everything, right? Oh, uh, they aren't configured for RO yet. Oh, but this one is. This one is a shuttle SRB. How big the shuttle SRBs are just as wide as this core. This might be overdoing it. Or I guess they're a little bit thinner. But yeah, that's that's overdoing it. Oh, that's upside down as well. Okay. Um Mitman SRB. Eh, probably not the best thing. It does have a gimbal though. Why are all the SRVs coming upside down. The E1 engine. Well, that's possible. They don't have a stock engine configured for an H1, which I would probably prefer. Oh, no, there it is. Okay. Mm. Yeah, let's have H1. Gonna try 2.5 meter tanks. I'm doing it only on one side first, I realize this. And that's because I've got to put more than one engine on the booster. Eh. Doesn't fit great. Sort of poking out. And we should have separatrons. Okay, I'm gonna, for the sake of making this quicker, forgive the bits of the H1 sticking out. And we're going to have four of these boosters. Okay, so sea level, that'll get us off the ground. And I think this is enough. It's actually sort of less efficient than uh, uh, Saturn 1B somehow. but Because Saturn 1B had only... Uh, no, no, I had eight of them. This is about the same as the Saturn 1B. Just a different uh, arrangement of everything. Yeah, okay. 
So... Uh, I'll leave that as is, so... Test 1. And we want launch clamps. We need to slide this down, because we don't need a milk stool situation. We have Kerbal Joint Reinforcements, so we'll see how that's working out. We have a Parachute. And we have Kerbals. We have not put in Tech Life Support, but it's got the food, water, and oxygen if necessary. Let's just pump up the oxygen. Um, so one thing you might want to add is Tech Life Support. I haven't done that yet. Okay, we'll want the engines lighting first. They take a while to spool up, so you absolutely want them first. And then we'll probably want the J2 to light before we separate off the boosters. Okay, so SAS on, throttle up. I don't have Mechjev, it's shocking. But at least we have the information in the corner now. Ignition. So you see how long they take to light up. And launch. Manually controlling a rocket in realism overhaul. The nominal trajectory in realism overhaul is just a little bit steeper than in stock. So here I'm hitting 70 degrees at about 6 kilometers. You could hit it by 4.5 kilometers and it'll be fine. Depends on your thrust to weight ratio. And then uh, 65 degrees, 9 kilometers, maybe 7.5 is possible. So we're going a little bit steeper because it has a little bit less thrust weight ratio than say the space shuttle. The better gimbling of realism overhaul engines makes it uh, much easier to control though. At 45 degrees, uh, uh, about 24 kilometers I'd be at 45 degrees is reasonable. We can light a vacuum engine basically any time now. Once we get beyond 20 kilometers is fine. You'll have pretty much its full ISP. But we'll wait because we don't need the extra thrust weight ratio now. We can't throttle down these engines. So that's one difference between realism overhaul and stock. Not all engines throttle. As far as engine ignitions go, these are limited to one, so they have no ignitions remaining. And we are gonna just flatten out now. Uh, pay attention to time to apoapsis. One minute and 40 seconds is sufficient for this kind of arrangement. Ignition of the J2. And separation of the boosters. So the reason I made sure to ignite the J2 before separating the boosters is because the fuel remains settled like that otherwise real fuels will model the fact that it is floating around in basically zero uh, you know microgravity or whatever and in that case it might not go into the turbo pumps and you're gonna have the engine choke so it's always good to have something to settle the fuel down make sure the fuel is getting pushed to the bottom of the tank there are a number of ways of doing that. RCS is one of them. Little separatrons to, uh, that ignite first, because separatrons are solid fuel. They don't need to worry about that. Um, that'll sell the fuel down so that this can ignite safely. Or just igniting it before separating off the previous stage, which like Soyuz would do. Uh, that's called hot staging. I didn't have a whole lot of electric charge. I mean, I don't have any solar panels on here, but it has built-in electric charge, quite a copious uh, battery, 43,200. But again, this is uh, different units. It is different units from what you're used to in stock. So that 43,200 is not as much as you might think. You can see the consumption rate is 1.9 per second right now. Okay, you can see that we're approaching our apoapsis now. And we're just going to hang out at apoapsis until the burn is done. So we can look at our vertical speed and a minor tilt of the rocket will keep it fairly close to zero. And we need 7,800 meters per second. This is a fairly tight orbit. The atmosphere in 
realism overhaul, real solar system, uh, ends at 140, 140 kilometers. Staging is a bit incorrect right now. And so what you'd plan for is about 9,500 meters per second to get to orbit, and then that can vary based on based on your thrust to weight ratio. So here we are in orbit. We had basically the right amount of fuel. You can see I didn't really put much to spare. I put what I needed, 215 meters per second. I could have left this to deorbit instead. But okay, uh, we're gonna ditch. Hopefully this will work, right? Okay. We have a lot of Delta V, a lot more than I wanted. Hmm. Oh, lack of pressure. Oh, this isn't a pressurized tank. Okay, well, we have less Delta V than I wanted. But the RCS works, which is a good backup. Now, the RCS uses the same fuel in this case, so we are okay. Uh, otherwise, yeah. Pressurized tanks, that's a whole other discussion. You'll need a service module tank to be able to feed this engine. So we're going to go over to Australia, where we will deorbit using the RCS. Now we're going to be using our backup system. And uh, retrograde is fine. We didn't put any RCS on here. I don't know if there's any built in. It says RCS there. So hopefully, once we decouple, we should activate that. There's probably no reaction wheel built into this anymore. You can, actually, you can see that there's no reaction wheel here. So, keep that in mind. Mostly the reaction wheels are going to be gone. So obviously your rocket would look a lot nicer and things would work out a little bit better if you had procedural parts and made the tank sizes exactly how they need to be. And also the fairing sizes the way they need to be. I'm gonna go with 70 kilometers as our descent periapsis. And about 200, uh, well, I'll, I'll just separate it off here. Okay, so I'm gonna point normal so it separates off outside of our flight path. And. RCS off, separation, uh-oh, I, that wasn't what I wanted, uh-oh, we've got a problem, Houston, we've got a problem, uh, why, why, it's probably on the wrong node, the decoupler, oh, that's sliding off, or, or the engine plate is on the wrong node, I don't know. Okay, this is gonna end in disaster. Typical. Oh no, wait, is it sliding off? It's sliding off. Maybe if I time warp. That this RCS isn't working. Maybe the RCS is misconfigured. Okay, those two are sliding off, but the tank is stuck. Great. Well, we've got one of those problems. Looks good though, our RSS visual enhancement seems to be doing well. Well, <laughs> what can I say? This would not be the first service module that was still stuck on on a pod during re-entry. We'll see what happens. We are approaching the west coast here. West coast of North America. Okay, we've gotten below 80 kilometers. It hasn't exploded yet. Engine is overheating. It's probably the only thing protecting the tank. The tank should overheat much faster. Oh, there we go. 
I actually want them to explode. <laughs> this is important. Because the parachute wasn't configured to carry all this with us. Maybe we'll decouple the heat shield. Uh, hopefully it's on the heat shield node and not a messed up node on the command pod. Yeah, the heat is diminishing. Darn it, heat! Just when I wanted you to explode something, you don't do it. Okay, we will uh, arm the parachute. And then after it deploys, we'll try separating off the heat shield. Okay, we'll, we'll jettison the heat shield. Hopefully it won't come back. Oh, it, it did it. It did it. It came back and hit us. Gosh darn it, Kerbal. I should have waited until full deployment, but it was a heavy tank. It shouldn't have had that much drag on it. Whatever. Anyway, Kerbal Space Program, everyone. Uh, so, going back to the VAB. Uh, one problem with the rockets, except for the node issue. We had a node issue. Um, we needed pressurized tanks. See, it says highly pressurized false, but this says feed pressure too low. We need a different kind of tank here. And that's uh, these RCS tanks would work. So instead of that, if we put this... See, it was... I think that node is what I wanted. I put it on this node. Oh, jeez. But that's because... anyway. Alright, so if we put this on here... Uh, this doesn't even have modular fuel tank. Gosh darn it. How is it not marked non-RO? Okay. Uh, do you have you have modular fuel tank? This one needs to be configured. I don't know why it's not. Okay, this one. That's not on the right note, is it? Okay, now Erizine. And here it says highly pressurized is true. And now this says propellant very stable. So that's what we needed. Anyway, sure enough, there were hijinks. But that's basically how you would do it with the stock parts. I think the stock parts need to be reconfigured a little bit with all the other mods that you can throw in for customized parts and all. Uh, sometimes the stock parts get neglected as far as their realism overall configurations. But anyway, it is possible to do this properly. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.